Ready, set, get wet with Simeon Corby and Elaine here. Welcome to Get Wet. It's a tidal wave of a show. You better believe it is. This show's wetter than Mr. Wet from Wet Town. Mm, he's wet. He certainly is. Go and sort the first game out then. Okay. And we'll kick off that first game in just a moment. But first of all, just come up here, because I want to show you this. It's so exciting. This is what Get Wet is all about, our very own shipwreck. You see, both of our teams are competing today to gain points, which will win them prizes along the way. But the team that gets the most points gets to search the shipwreck for today's mystery star prize. You might call it the Big Kahuna. Only one of our teams will win that opportunity to search for the star prize up here on the shipwreck and even cooler, scuba diving down there on the seabed next to the harbour wall. So let's meet the teams competing to win that chance on today's Get Wet. First of all, the green team are Kelly and Simon, the Eastleigh Bears. And the orange team are Tamar and Robert, the Teddington Tigers. OK, let's get wet with the big splash. The big splash is the first of three games for the teams are competing for that final place in the chess quest. Meanwhile, they're picking up points along the way that lead to big prizes. But first of all, the teams have to come down the chute here and then swim over to the valve, turning the wheel because it operates the water cannon at the other side of the pool. <laughs> these things are brilliant fun. Before they get their hands on these, though, a few more obstacles to overcome. Then the teams have to get themselves up this very slippery slope. All the while, they're collecting doubloons. They start off finding a couple of bronze ones. They're worth five points. The silver ones are worth ten, but some of those are very tricky to get your hands on. Absolutely, because these two at the end are extremely tricky. Because the teams have to get along this balance bar, but it is extremely slippery. I'll just jump in. OK, so the teams have to jump in, get onto the wonder wheels, work their way across the pool, picking up the balloons on the way to the pontoon where Sim is at the moment. Once they get here, they find this gold doubloon worth 20 points and having slapped that on their suit, they can then get busy with the water cannon, <laughs> blasting the opposition and making it very tricky for those still left in the Wonder Wheels. We have 100 points available to each team in this game and two minutes to fetch them all. So if our teams are standing by, let's give them a huge send-off as we say, ready, set, get ready! they go, open those valves and get the water cannons pumping. The Bears have done it and so have the Tigers. A good start by both teams. Already Kelly is there for the green team, the Bears. First along the balance bar, is she going to grab the silver to blend? She's got one, well done, nice one. Oh, but she... off the balance bar as Kelly jumps up. I don't know where the Tigers are. They've really taken their time already. The Bears are in those wonder wheels. The Tigers are having a few problems with that slippery slope, I think. Simon is first over towards the pontoon now. I think he's heading straight for the water cannons. He's missed his chance to get the silver doubloon on the balance bar, but he could be the first to pick up that gold. He's having trouble just getting his Wonder Wheel back up. Meanwhile, the Tigers have made it along the balance bar, but missed both their silver doubloons. Here comes Simon. He's there for the Bears, first on the water cannon. And, oh, no, he's taking no prisoners. He's blasting Tamar. She's doing her best to pick up those doubloons from the surface of the water, but, well, if she wanted a drink, now she's got one, hasn't she? she got a big place load of water from Simon there. Meanwhile, I do believe Robert's going to be next up on the pontoon. Can he get himself that gold to blue? Come on, Robert, you can do it, mate. Good man. Kelly is still out there doing well. She's just swimming down to the bottom of the pool. She can see it's a balloon that's on the bottom. She's picked it up. You can do that. You can go where you want in the big splash as long as you pick up those points. 
that's it. Time is up. What a fast and furious two minutes that felt like. A few points missed. It could go either way at this stage. Let's check out the scores. Well, Sim, the Teddington Tigers have 60 points, but the Eastley Bears have 90 points. That was a great game. Well, the Greens have got an early lead, but there's plenty of chance for the uh, Orange Absolutely. team to catch up, for the Tigers to catch up. And all the while, of course, the more points you get, the more prizes you win. Level 1, 75 points. Get your claws clicking and catch all the action with this Snaptastic sports camera. Level 2, 100 points. Nothing's very far away with these superb compact binoculars. Level 3, 125 points. You'll have the whole kit and caboodle with this fabulous sporty gear. Level 4, 150 points. You'll be grooving while you're moving when you play this tremendous portable CD system. So, already the prizes are mounting up, but don't forget, the more points our teams get, the better their chances of getting the big one. Yeah, the final place in the chest quest. Now, only one of our teams can do that. They're building up points all the time. And another chance now to build up those scores as we play Brainwaves. Brainwaves works like this. It's a true or false quiz, basically. Elaine and I have three statements each all about sport. The trouble is, <laughs> we've been a bit devious and just made some of them up, haven't we? Yes. Totally fictional. <laughs> all our teams have to do is guess which are true and which are false. They've each elected a spokesperson, and it's the two girls. It's Kelly and Tamar. Now, the green team are in the lead, so Bears, you'll go first. Five points for every correct answer, so a possible 15 points to be gained by our teams. So... Linford Christie won the 100 metres at the European Cup in Munich in June 1997. True or false? True. It is true. In tennis, national teams have been competing since 1900 for the Ryder Cup. True or false? True. Ah, I'm afraid it's false. They compete for the Davis Cup. And finally, in soccer, the field must always be longer than it is wide. True or false? True. It is true. It is true. Well done. Yeah, Two out of three. OK. <clears throat> Orange team. The Grand National is the most famous flat race in the racing calendar. True or false? False. It is false. The Grand National is a national hunt race. Jennifer Stout, alias Rebel the Gladiator, won a gold medal in the 4x400 metres at the Commonwealth Games in 1990. True or false? True. It's true, well done. Golfer Fred Couples finished second in the 1998 Masters in Atlanta. True or false? False. It is false. It's not Atlanta, it's Augusta. So, uh, a bit of a chance for the Tigers to catch up there. Let's check out the scoreboard. Well, Sim, the Tigers have 75 points, but still holding on to that lead. The Bears with 100! So, uh, they've narrowed the gap, the Tigers, by five points, but there's still plenty more points to gain, isn't there? There is. I'm going to get the next game ready. OK. I think it's time we've got our contestants back in the water to see if they sink or swim. In sink or swim, we have the boys in the inflatable armchairs and the girls in the red tippy tops. What they have to do is to get as many sponges in the nets at the back there. That's right. For every five sponges they get in the nets, another five points is notched up, but just 60 seconds on the clock, so there should be one minute of mayhem. So tigers and bears, stand by. Ready, set, get wet! <laughs>
time is up. <laughs> a few swam, a few sunk. We're going to have to do some big counting up here and check out those scores. Well, Sin, the Teddington Tigers have 105 points, but still in the lead, the Eastleigh Bears with 140. So, both teams have already won the sports camera and compact binoculars. The Bears also have the sports bag, hat and t-shirt. Still to play for then, this splendid portable compact disc system. Prizes on today's show. Very nice. And of course, our teams are competing for that mystery star prize at the end of the show. Let's see if we can gain some more points now as the guys play Brainwaves. Uh, it's a true or false quiz, basically, isn't it? Yep, still a true or false, but this time only one member from each team is going to play. They're going to be asked six questions, both at the same time. Today's theme is sea creatures. Now, as we give you these statements, you decide true or false, but instead of shouting it out, you indicate your answer with your little light here. Red for false, green for true. We've sat you back to back, so you don't know what the other team is guessing. Five points per question and a potential... 30 points, then, for the teams to gain. So, guys, if you're standing by, let's go. Sardines are members of the herring family. True or false? It is true. Both right. The largest fish in the sea is the whale shark. True or false? It's true. Both right. Conga eels are so called because they swim one behind the other in a long formation. It is false. <laughs> Completely made up. Carp have three rows of throat teeth. True or false? It's true. The common anchovy is also called whitebait. It is true. Pirate fish are so called because they have a patch over one eye. True or false? It is false. They both had the measure <laughs> of you making that one, I feel like. That's <laughs> it, guys. You can relax. All six questions over. So, a few differences of opinion. Let's see how it's affected the scores. Well, here's how it looks now. The Teddington Tigers have 125 points. Still in lead, the Bears with 160. <laughs> So the Tigers are just nipping at the heels of the Bears, making a bit of a comeback there. And now a chance to get back in the water as we play the most popular game from our last series. It's a belter, this one. Walk on water. In this game, we have a bin of yellow balls at that side of the pool. We've also got a bin of red balls at this side of the pool. What the teams have to do is to swap the balls over, walking on water on the bridge provided. Now, we play this game one team at a time. The Bears are in the lead, so they'll go first and set the pace for the Tigers. While they're attempting to swap those balls over, the Tigers will be just blasting them with these water cannons. Now, they will get five points for every ball swapped over. Every red and yellow ball swapped worth five points and a minute and a half to do it. Ready, set, get wet! So, the action has begun with Simon and Kelly making their way across. No one in the water yet, and already they've swapped two balls over. But this is where things start to get messy, because as you can see, oh, by the fact that Kelly's just taken a bit of a dive, the bridge that was originally in quite good shape starts to get a little bit disjointed and a little bit wobbly. And whoop, oi, go, oh, good effort there, Kelly. Oh, he's in the water. Go on, Simon. Now, Kelly's being a little bit hassled by these water cannons <laughs> that Tamar and Robert are blasting them with. Now then, he stands himself up. Simon sees the wound he's going to take. He's on his knees, Kelly getting the ball across. He can't, but oh! Kelly's in the water. <laughs> the ground just moved away from under, but Robert doesn't care. He's still swapping the balls over for all his life. Good effort, boy. Go on then, Kelly. She's climbing up to that head platform, and Robert, he's up to his waist in water. We can't get on top of the blue block. He's there, but he's lost the ball. He's alive to have a red ball. Tentatively stepping, Kelly makes the way across. He's on her knees. And Robert's just dying of that. I do believe they've got two more yellow balls this time. No, he's dropped it in the water. I don't know if they're going to make that. No, they're not. The time runs out before they can get the balls across at the end. A good effort, though, 
Let's see how the Teddington Tigers do when they have to walk on water. Orange Tigers, are you ready? Set, get wet! Robert's first out on the water and he's... Oh, he's lost his ball! He's, he's lost his ball. He's got to the other side without his red ball, but Tamar is making good progress. But being drenched, being drenched by... Come on, Robert, you can do it. Run! I think speed is the key here. The Kelly and Simon are really showing no mercy with these water cannons. Go on, Tamar. Good effort. She has swapped the balls over. Robert's still floundering. He's got to get back on that platform. Go on, boy. Tamar's still another one. She's going like a rocket. You see, she's so small and light that maybe she has not a hand out there. The problem is, you see, when big old Bob gets out on the water there, <laughs> the blocks move all over the place. <laughs> Come on, Robert. You're doing well, mate. There you go. He's got a ball across. Tamar gets a third swan. She's doing brilliantly. Come on, Robert. You can do it. Run! I think speed is the key here. The more you hang around, the more the bridge starts to break up and wobble. Oh, Tamar's in. She's taken a dive. And we get whoops of delight. Whoops of delight from Kelly and Simon, who think they're kind of responsible for that because they did blast both of them at the same time. These water cannons are quite powerful when you get them in the face. Can they get one more across? Go on, Tamar. Robert's in the water again. <laughs> That's it. Time is up. <laughs> A brilliant effort by both teams. Before we check out those scores, just look at the evidence of how tricky it is to walk on water. A cracking game, isn't it? One of our favourites on this show. And it's left us with a final score. Well, Sim, here's how it is. 140 points for the Tigers. But this week's chess questers are the Bears with 185! <laughs> so, well done to the Bears. Commiserations to the Tigers. But you've been great contestants. Have you enjoyed your day, Tamar? Yeah. You've been great. And Robert, had a good time? Oh. You were very entertaining on the walk on water as well. <laughs> I think you've been great contestants. All that's left for you to do is swim for home. Dump your towels and let's see you go for it. A big round of applause, please, for Robert and Tamar, the Teddington Tigers! Yay! Off you go. Which means that the pressure really mounts now as Kelly and Simon go with Elaine to get kitted up in their scuba gear and their helmets. And we prepare to play the chest quest. This is the bit we've been waiting for, but before I explain how the quest works, just have a look at this. This is the star prize Simon and Kelly are playing for today. Get your socks on, your red ones that is, when you take this brilliant Boston break in the US of A! A holiday in Boston, not in Lincolnshire, over in America. Pretty cool, and that's for each of them, if they can open this baby. All they have to do to win the star prize on the chest quest is open the chest. Of course, it's locked at the moment. Two sturdy padlocks chaining the chest shut. So, all Simon and Kelly need to do is find the two keys that open those padlocks. This is how it works. I'll give each of them the first key on their quest. And in Kelly's case, because she'll be on the deck for this game, that'll bring her up to here, her first chest. When she opens it, she could find something inside like, well, this will be a crowbar. That would take her to the next section on the shipwreck, which would be, in this case, all the way up here, where she would jam open the box as fast as she can and find the next item. So each little puzzle leads on to the next. And all the while, down below the water, Simon will also be tackling a whole different set of underwater challenges. Now then, as we speak, Simon is just getting kitted up. He's got his scuba gear over there. He'll be getting ready with Elaine. She'll go down with him just to make sure everything's cool underwater. Now, every time we play the quest, we give the contestants a different route. So, let's look at today's route. Kelly's first key will, of course, open the treasure chest. From there, down to prize open the bosun's closet. Then, up to raid the captain's lockers. Out front now to unscrew the anode. And then, rifle the Russian trunks to find her golden key. 
Meanwhile, down below, Simon must of course open the sunken chest, then up to confront the abyss. Down next, to lift the lobster pot. And finally, then across to crack the safe where he'll find his golden key. And that's all there is to it. Three minutes to complete that route and the prize is theirs. Well, our contestants are ready, so please go mad. Show your appreciation for Simon and Kelly, the Eastley Bears! Looking good in his scuba gear there. OK, Kelly, well, you've seen the star prize. It's a bit of a belter, isn't it? A yeah. trip to Boston in America if you get this quest complete in three minutes. How do you feel? Great. You confident? Yeah. We're all behind you. We all want you to win this. Now, our safety diver, Rocksteady Eddie, is just making sure that all the procedures are being gone through for Simon and his scuba gear. How's everything looking, Eddie? He's just about ready to go, Simon. Excellent. The mask is on, the air is on his back, the fins are on his feet. I will give each of our contestants the first key on their route. So, Kelly, there you go. That will open the first chest. After that, it's up to you. We're all with you on this one. Simon, yeah. if you just grab that, that will open your first chest underwater. Right. If you're standing by, three minutes to complete the quest and win that star prize, let's give them a huge send-off as we start the chest quest in five, four, three, two, one, go! Tickets for a nice holiday. Well done, they did it. Oh, the tension. I thought the time was just slipping away there. How do you feel, Kelly? You've won a Brilliant. holiday from Boston. You feeling good? Brilliant. Oh, well, how about you, Simon? Well done. Oh, great. <laughs> Congratulations to both of them. A fine effort. We'll see you soon for more Get Wet. Bye bye. <laughs>